See, you can try to do all things the wrong way. What I mean by that is you can try to do all things in your own strength, in your own ability. See, there's human might, there's human strength. The Bible tells us it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit. Ah, there it is. Because you have, your body is, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God, Jesus, dwells in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. So you have superhuman ability. You have supernatural ability. And if you try to do all things in your own strength, you'll wear yourself out. But God wants us to do all things, here it is, through Christ. In other words, through his ability on the inside of you. What does he do? Who strengthens me. So lean on and rely on his strength to do all you do. Welcome to the Living by Grace podcast with Al Jennings. When you receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness, you will reign in life. Listen in as we discuss the effortless life of God's grace. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Living by Grace podcast. I'm Al Jennings, and we are here to do what we do, deliver the word to you, publish the word of God. I love, love, love teaching the Word of God, and I like for this podcast to be conversational. Let me get my mic adjusted a little bit. All right. Keeps wanting to move around on me. Want to get it in the right position. All righty, all righty. Thanks for joining today. We're going to pick up in this series that I started a few weeks ago called enemies of faith. We have enemies to our faith. Let's look at our foundation scripture in 1 Timothy 6.12. I say this is conversational, but it's really just one way, just me talking. But um, get involved, open up your Bibles to the scripture. I'll open up, even though I've got some of the scriptures anyway, that I'm going to be talking about on the screen. You're welcome to go in your own Bible. Take notes. I encourage you to take notes and um, get your favorite drink. I got my tea here. Oh, man, it's getting a little cold. Let me refresh it. So I don't, when I say I want this to be conversational, what I mean is I don't want to just, or, I don't want to preach. Now, the preacher, come on me because I get so excited about this word. <laughs> but uh, I try to calm down. This word is so good. The word of God will change your life. And so we're going to deal with these enemies, enemies of faith. Oh, excuse me. I need to get my seat adjusted a little bit. I'll get myself together here in a second. Okay. <laughs> Enemies of faith. This is this is our foundation scripture. 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession uh, in the presence of many witnesses. Okay, so a bit of review. We are in a faith fight, y'all. The enemy is the devil. The good news is we don't have to fight him. This is a fight of faith. And the only fight that you as a Christian or a believer is called to fight is the fight of faith. Now, it's a good fight, not just a fight. But a good fight, the reason why it's a good fight is because you win. Now, if you're just listening to this, um, if this is the first time you are listening to this series, I encourage you to go back and listen to the previous three messages, and that will catch you up. But I'm going to do a little bit of, of review. So fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. It's a good fight because we have already won because Jesus on the cross won the victory for us. He defeated the devil on the cross. 
And therefore, we have the victory. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we already won. That's why it's a good fight. And what we're doing as believers is we're, we are um, standing, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6, to stand and having done all, to stand. And the enemy is already defeated, and we're just demonstrating Satan's defeat. He's a, a defeated foe. He wants to make you think he's all big and bad, but he's really defeated. All right? As I said, Jesus whooped him. He whooped him, not just whipped him, he whooped him on the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection. So it's a good fight. And the fight is, what's the fight? The fight of faith. It's the only fight that the Christian is called to fight, and that is a faith fight. So we've been dealing with enemies because if we are in a fight, and we are because the Bible says we are, then of necessity there must be enemies to our faith. So I'm dealing with what I consider major enemies to our faith. I'm not saying this is or these are the only enemies, but these are some major ones. And if you don't deal with this, um, the enemy can defeat you if you don't know these truths, okay? They're very important. Enemy number one that we covered is a lack of knowledge of God's Word. A lack of knowledge of God's Word. So, again, you can listen or watch the previous episodes to get the information about that, okay? And it's good to get information from God's word because faith comes by hearing and hearing through the message about Christ. It's all about Jesus and his finished work. And we need to keep hearing it. Even if you've heard some of these scriptures or heard some of these truths, it's good to keep hearing because faith does not come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing. That's in the continual present tense. Okay? All right. So, enemy number one is a lack of knowledge of God's Word. Today, I want to talk about enemy number two, and that is a failure to act like God's Word is true. A failure to act like God's Word is true. You say you, the, you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible? Some people say, well, yes, pastor, yes, amen. I believe the Bible. I believe that there are 37, excuse me, 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in the New, 66 in all. Yes, I believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That's wonderful. If you believe it, my question to you is, do you act like it's true? You believe the Bible? Yes then act like it's true, okay? And I'm going to give you some examples so you know exactly what I'm talking about. When the Bible gives you a promise, act like it's true, act like it's yours. Peter talks about there have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises so that by these you may become partakers of the divine nature. Praise God. So we've got some wonderful promises in the Word of God. And let me cover, I'm not going to cover all of them. There's too many to cover in this uh, short lesson here. But I'm going to give you some examples. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Powerful scripture. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, if you believe the Bible... This is in the Bible, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Okay, make it personal. 
Let's read it again. And you put your name in there. I'm going to put my name in here. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens Al. No, let me let me do that again. Al can do all things through Christ who strengthens Al. Now, notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say I can do all things. It says I can do all things through Christ. See, you can try to do all things the wrong way. What I mean by that is you can try to do all things in your own strength, in your own ability. But that's not what this is talking about. See, there's human might, there's human strength. The Bible tells us is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit. Uh, there it is. Because you have the greater one, the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, and God lives on the inside of you if you're a believer. Your body is, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God, Jesus, dwells in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. So you have superhuman ability. You have supernatural ability. And if you try to do all things in your own strength, you'll wear yourself out. But God wants us to do all things, here it is, through Christ. In other words, through his ability on the inside of you. What does he do? Who strengthens me, Christ strengthens you. So lean on and rely on his strength to do all you do. See, I know we're under grace and not under works. However, we should do good works. <laughs> it was preordained beforehand that we predestined beforehand that we should do the good works that God predestined and made ready for us to live. Scripture for that is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 from the Amplified. All right? So works is not a bad thing as long as you're working through the ability that's on the inside of you. Works is not a bad thing. All right? Now, we live by grace, not by works. See, and grace, see, the Holy Spirit, he is called the, the spirit of grace. So we're working, but it's all about how you work. And how we work is by the spirit, like Paul. Paul said, I labor, watch this, more abundantly than them all. But not I, but the grace that's in me, through the grace that's in me. I'm paraphrasing. But Paul's saying, I'm working, but not by my ability, but by his ability, by the grace given unto me. That's how I work. And I work more abundantly than them all. So Paul's not against work. All right. The work that's not of God is trying to work to earn God's acceptance, to try to work to earn God's favor, to work to try to earn his love, to work to try to earn his approval. Okay, that's the wrong kind of work because we're under grace. We live by grace, which is his unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor. Okay, let's go a little bit further with this. Let me give you a practical example. Let's say on the job, your boss comes to you. If you work on a job and your boss says, look, I got some other stuff for you, do, for you to do in addition to what you already have to do, okay? And he, he doubles your workload. So instead of reacting and say, Oh, why is he giving me all this work? You know, he giving me the work of two people. What does he expect me to do? I only got 40 hours a week. I, I don't have time to do all this stuff. 
I can't do this. See, you believe the Bible? Instead of thinking that he's picking on you and he's mistreating you and that kind of stuff, instead, you see, this may be what, what you're looking at as a negative could be God giving you an opportunity for promotion. It could be a divine setup where you you may think in the natural, if you react quickly and think, well, my boss is being unfair. Why is he giving it to me? He's picking on me. This is unfair. Why doesn't he give it to somebody else? Well, maybe, maybe. Okay. See, listen to your spirit. You have a spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you to lead you, guide you, and direct you. This could be God setting you up for a promotion. So no matter what, when you present it with stuff to do that's more than your normal workload and you think somebody's being, the boss is being unfair, instead of taking that attitude, take the attitude of, I can do this. I, I got this. Me and God, we got this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if, if you have to stay overtime, if you have to come in early to do it, go ahead and do it and get it done. Get it done faster than he thinks. Maybe it could be he brought it to you not thinking you can do it. All right? So take the attitude, the mindset, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus is going to help me to do this. And they may give you some stuff to do that you don't know how to do when they bring it to you, but Christ will help you. The Holy Spirit, I like how the ESV translation how it describes the Holy Spirit as the helper. He will help you. So I gave you one example, but there's a numerous examples on the job of how Jesus will help you just with your normal work and how he'll give you answers that other people don't have because you have the greater one on the inside of you. You see what I'm talking about? What am I talking about today? I'm talking about... An enemy to your faith is a failure to act like God's word is true. So what is not acting like the word is true in this example? Saying, oh, I can't do this. This is just too much work. Why is he bringing this to me? This is double my workload. I can't do it. Or something comes across your desk. It's a part of your normal work. It fits your job description, but you just don't know how to do it. In the natural, when they bring it to you and you look at it, you don't know how to do it. But listen to the Holy Spirit and take the attitude. Say with your mouth, I can do this through Christ who strengthens me, who helps me. <laughs> All right, let's look at another example. I hope you're getting something out of this. Let's look at Philippians, same chapter, drop down to verse 19, chapter 4, verse 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, this is a good one because a lot of people in the body of Christ are struggling financially. So when you present it, for example, I'm giving you some practical examples. If you're presented with a situation where you don't know how you're going to pay the bills, the bills are piling up, and in the natural, you have no money to pay these bills. So what I'm encouraging you to do is stand on this verse and act like God's word is true. And my God shall supply all, not some, all your need according to not your bank account, 
but according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You may not know how he's going to do it. Just trust him to do it. God has a million ways to get money to you, to supply your need. Just trust him to do it. See, our job in the new covenant, the only thing that we have to do in the new covenant is believe. One time, the disciples asked Jesus an interesting question. They said, what must we do to do the works of God? And he gave them a very interesting answer. He said, believe on him whom he sent. In other words, believe in me. Now, they asked him a load of questions. They, they seen him do all these miracles, cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, so forth, bless people. And this was a legitimate question. They wanted to know, how do we do this? How can we do the works of God? He said, believe. Now, that's too simple for some people. But this is our responsibility under the new covenant is to believe what he says. And if you believe it, you'll act like it's true if you really believe it. Like if I told you that I deposited a million dollars in the bank. Now, I don't have a million dollars at this particular point in time. <laughs> but let's say I did. And I said, I deposited a million dollars in your bank account. And you've got a thousand dollars of overdue bills. Now all you have to do is go to the bank and make a withdrawal. And I tell you how to do it. And let's say after I do that, you go around talking about, you know what, I got a thousand dollars in bills. I have no idea how I'm gonna pay it. Wait a minute. And you didn't go to the bank and do what I told you? I just deposited a million dollars in your account. See, you really didn't believe that. You didn't really understand what I did. If you did, you would go and make a withdrawal and pay those bills and have plenty of money left over to bless you and to bless others. You can bless others. Praise God. So, if you believe that God supplies all you need, then act like he supplies all you need. Don't go around complaining, I don't know what I'm going to do about all these bills. See, if you don't act like this word is true, you can do things like talk negative and talk about, man, I don't know how, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to pay all these bills. These bills are just piling up on me. I'm so poor I can't pay attention. It's always a rainy day. Sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes almost level to the ground. I just can't get ahead. You can't get ahead. As soon as I get a raise, they raise the prices. See, stop talking like that and start saying with boldness, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I serve El Shaddai. He's the God who is more than enough. I serve one of his names is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Praise God. So say, I have everything. Say it right now. I have everything I need and more than enough because my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Right? Not according to your bank account. It's not your job to figure out or try to figure out how he's going to do it. Just look to, to him as the source of your supply. <laughs> yes. When Jesus and the disciples had uh, encountered a multitude of people who were hungry, and the disciples were wondering, how are we going to feed all these people? All we have is 
a two-piece fish dinner here. And one of, one of the disciples said, this is all we have. They looked at the insufficiency in what they had. And there were 5,000 men. That's not the total amount of people. There were 5,000 men. And so there were women and children could have been 15,000 people out there in total. And so one of the disciples said, we got, all we got is um, two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread, but what is that among so many? They, they looked at the, the bigness of the need and how little they had instead of looking at the one who can supply it all right there in front of them. <laughs> huh? And so Jesus multiplied the fish and the loaves, and they had more than enough. They had leftovers. See, God is a big God, all right? Whatever you're facing, whatever financial struggle you're in, whatever mountains that you're facing, the bills could be piling up. Just believe. This sounds so simple, but it is simple. It's so simple that some people miss it. Believing is so powerful. Believe that he supplies all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And watch him work. It's not your job to figure out how he's going to do it. All right? Let's look at one more example. 1 Peter 5, 7. We live in a time, man, where there are a lot of believers that are under pressure. They're under a lot of stress. What do we do about it? Okay. 1 Peter 5, 7. Now, there's a lot that we could worry about if we wanted to, right? Jesus said, let me take a sip of this tea right here. <laughs> Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 25, don't worry about your life. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing. Well, God, that's easy for you to say. You don't live down here. I got children that's out of control. I've got bills to pay. I'm struggling financially. I'm faced with pressures on the job. All these demands are being placed upon me. I got demands at home, demands on the job. My children demand this of me. My wife demands this of me or my Husband demands this of me. I've got all these expectations. People are depending on me for stuff, and I'm just overwhelmed. You ever been there? I have. Well, the good news is that God just doesn't tell us what not to do, like don't worry, don't be anxious, and then not give us a solution. He tells us exactly what to do about worries, and cares, and anxieties. Let me say this. You are not built to handle stress and worry, anxiety, okay? And that stuff will crush you if you let it. And we all get tempted to worry, don't we? To be anxious about things. But what we need to do is learn to rest. Rest in the finished work, knowing that we have a heavenly Father who cares for you. We got a promise. What am I talking about? I'm talking about acting like the word is true. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care. Not some of your care. Lord, you take half of my care. I can't bear this heavy load. 
But if you just take half of them, I'll take the other half. No, it's all or nothing. You're not built to handle any stress or care. And it is possible to live a carefree, worry-free, stress-free, anxiety-free life. So take it. Just believe it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about acting like the word is true. Acting like that he can take all your care. Because he said, casting all your care upon him. He can handle it, but you can't. Anxiety will crush you if you let it, but don't let it. So, okay, Jesus, you said don't worry. Your word says be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. All right? Instead of worrying, what do we do? We pray. This is a prayer, casting your care upon him. For he cares for you. How do I do that? Very simple. Lord, I give you all my cares. If you, if you have cares right now, let me agree with you in prayer. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for my friend right now. And I agree with them in prayer right now. We cast all, agree with me right now, we cast all of our burdens, all of our cares, all of our anxieties on you right now. For you care for my friend affectionately and you care about them watchfully. Father, you have all of our anxieties, all of our worries. We cast them all on you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, who has your worries? God, your Heavenly Father. Now, don't take them back. He has them. Who doesn't have them? You. That makes you free. Ooh, praise God. Let's look at this out of the Amplified. Last scripture. And I'm going to give you an example and then let you go. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries. See, not some. All your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns. Once and for all on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Casting what? The whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns. Watch this. Once and for all on him. He cares for you affectionately. Wow, that's a that's a passionate term. That's an endearing term. He loves you affectionately. He cares for you affectionately. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm um, going down the road and I've got a heavy load on my back. Let's say I'm on my way to church. And I've got some sound equipment on my back. I've got some speakers and um, other sound equipment on my back. Okay. I got a sound board on my back. I got stage monitors on my back. I've got a, a computer on my back. Okay. And, um, I'm on my way to church with sound equipment, a computer, and I'm struggling. It's on my back. And you're riding down the street in your pickup truck, your Ford F-150, and you see me and you say, that looks like Pastor Al on the way to church. Let me see, what, what, is, he, what is he doing with all this equipment and all this stuff on his back? Let me see what's going on. So you pull over and you ask me, Pastor Al, where are you going? And I say, 
I'm on my way to church. And you say, well, let me help you. Let me take all this load off of you. And so you began one by one to, to take every piece of equipment off of my back and on to the back of your pickup truck. And you got every single item, all the sound equipment, the computer, everything. Now, before, I was struggling. I was hunched over. I was hunched over with this heavy load on my back, struggling. But now, what happened? You took it all, the whole of it, and you put it in your pickup truck. Now, now you go on about your way and you say, Pastor, you, you want to um, jump in the truck? And I said, no, I'll, I'll walk the rest of the way. You just take it and I'll meet you at church. So off you go with all the equipment, all the stuff I had on my back. And now you see me and, uh, and I'm still hunched over with nothing on my back, but I'm still hunched over walking on my way to church, hunched over like something's on my back, but I'm free. Why am I free? Because you got the load. Who has it? You. Who don't? Me. So why am I walking hunched over? And see, you may have heard this term, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. When you cast your care on the Lord, listen, this is very important. Act like the word is true. An enemy to your faith is to fail to act like God's word is true. If you believe after casting all your anxieties, worries, and concern, concerns on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully, if you believe he has it, then act like he has it and act like you don't, and walk away free. Believe that he has it. Now, you may not feel like he has it, but it's not about feeling. This is a faith fight. The enemy is out to try to keep you from operating in faith and believing his word. This is what I'm talking about. If you believe that he has your cares, then act like it. Go around saying, praise God, I am worry-free. I am anxiety-free. I am stress-free. You may not feel like it, but we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not moved by what we see. You may be tempted to worry after you cast your worries on him, but resist the temptation to worry. And if you happen to take the worry back, some of it or all of it, then rinse and repeat. Cast them back on him. And act like the word is true. Praise God. I hope you got something out of this today. Praise God. Enemy number two is a failure to act like God's word is true. You believe the Bible? Yes. Then act like it's true. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. I'm out. Thank you for joining us today for the Living by Grace podcast. You are greatly blessed, highly favored, deeply loved, totally righteous, and destined to win because of Jesus. Have an amazing day.